this video is going to show you the muscles of the, the back of the pelvis. Um, please look at the previous video on bony landmarks at the posterior hip um, because then we'll see how we got to this section. Uh, the first one we're going to show you is the deepest muscle in the hip or one of the deepest and we're going to go from the sacrum. Lateral edge of sacrum, so just have a little feel. That's it, just here. The lateral edge of the sacrum and then it heads down to this bit that I've drawn that looks like the size of a golf ball, the greater trochanter. So it actually is a muscle that's bigger in the belly like so, like so there, and the fibers are going down that way. That's it, good. And that muscle, maybe I've drawn it slightly wider than it should be, is the piriformis muscle. Piri means pear, so it's a pear-shaped muscle. Uh, this muscle, when it contracts, pulls the greater trochanter upwards and therefore you get some lateral rotation of the hip. Um, if we want to try and stretch the muscle, we've got to go into medial rotation. So piriformis lies deeper uh, to the other muscles I'm now going to draw. So I think the next best one to draw in terms of layers would be the gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus is the largest muscle on the, uh, on the bottom, on the glutes. And it has an attachment from the coccyx. I didn't quite get to draw the coccyx, but uh, we'll go from here. Um, up the sacrum, up over near the SI joint, around that iliac crest. And it comes off about here. It doesn't go all the way around. It also forms the back fold here. It goes underneath, and we can see the fold at the bottom there. Um, and the fibres are heading towards the greater trochanter. So the fibers of the glute max come diagonally. They go over greater trochanter. And do you know where they actually extend to? You can see my client is slightly ticklish with this. <laughs> okay, so the glute max fibers, there we go. A little bit of a touch reflex is going into this structure called the iliotibial band. Um, what color? I'll draw that in green. So the iliotibial band we did on the last video is this thick band that goes down the side of the thigh. And then we've got this glute max going into it. So with IT band work, instead of just simply massaging the iliotibial band itself, if you get into the glutes, you're going to have a lot better effect. So that's glute max. And then the next one is glute medius. Let's go with a yellow, see if the yellow works. The glute medius is more of a lateral muscle. Where I've stopped glute max, we're going to start glute medius. Glute medius is here. And it's uh, on the side of the hip. Okay, if I just demonstrate on myself, glute max would be here. Glute medius is more lateral. And further around, we've got TFL. So glute max is this side muscle that then goes into um, or near the IT band, so it attaches on the greater decanter and it's responsible for hip abduction and also helping to support one leg standing. So, so we go like so into the greater trochanter like that. Now when I teach this on my courses, I normally refer to the glute medius as, if we just look up here, a deltoid that's dropped off and stuck on the side of the hip. The deltoid, if we know, has anterior, middle and posterior fibers, so it has different movements. And the glute medius on the hip also has anterior, middle and posterior fibers. So quite similar muscle actions and how they um, refer to the ball and socket joint underneath. Uh, the minimus, we're not going to draw it on, lies underneath both of those, so it's a lot deeper. Um, but let me just show you from previous videos, we've got the three hamstrings coming off the ischial tuberosity. Can you remember the three hamstrings? Bicep femoris, semimembranosis, semitendinosis. We've got the TFL, which lies further around here. Okay, and that goes into the iliotibial band, so it has a pull from these two different directions. I'm going to show you where the QL is. The QL commonly, um, there's a common name for it, is the quadratus lumborum. Quadratus lumborum, lumbar, lumbar area, and we've got L1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, from what I drew before, we've got the iliac crest. So um, the QL goes from posterior iliac crest 
up to the bottom rib, uh, rib number 12. And it also has some attachments of the transverse processes. So from posterior iliac crest, not quite close to the spine here, which is a rector spinae, we've got this muscle that goes up this way, like so, into the bottom rib. But it also has attachments off these transverse processes. Like so. This muscle is responsible for lateral flexion of the spine. So lateral flexion of the spine, if you look up, is this side bending. So my right QL will be contracting and my left QL will be put on stretch. So QL. Uh, another one I can get to in this position is intercostals. Well, there are many intercostals. There are internal and external. And really, the best way to draw them is just to go in between each of the ribs. Internal and external are slightly different in terms of fibre direction. Um, so we can go one that way and the others will go across the other way. Internal help with external respiration and internal with external respiration. But to palpate it for a, an exercise, you've just got to get your fingers there in between. So find two ribs on your partner and find the two ribs. If you just go in between here, you'll be pressing on these muscles and it can feel quite tender.